York County is so much more than just a stop for gas on I-8. 17 County is filled with unique individuals with unique stories just waiting to be told. Welcome to the 17 County Podcast with your host, Emily Perry. Thank you for listening to this episode of 17 County. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and listen to our podcast. Listeners like you are what makes this podcast happen, so we appreciate the continued support. We would also like to take the time to thank our members, AgriProducts, Cornerstone Bank, Central Valley Ag, Henderson State Bank, York News Times, Black Hills Energy, Collins Aerospace, Southeast Community College, and York Medical Clinic. Without these great members, we wouldn't be able to do what we do here at the YCDC and focus on the growth and development of York County. So thank you. Brian Kurth is joining me today. He's the general manager at McLean Beef here in York. He is originally from Oregon, so a little ways away, and values his time with family above all else. So thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, thanks for considering me and bringing me to this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So just to kind of ease into the podcast world, I guess, tell me one interesting fact about yourself that people might not know about you. Well, a strange thing that I do is actually sing. And so a strange fact about myself is that I actually sang to my wife at our marriage during the ceremony. So I've been singing uh, since a kid. I went through high school and college uh, and all the way through adulthood singing and doing solos and stuff like that. So uh, that's a little little thing about me. That's, well, A, that's very sweet. I would love that personally. (laughs) And B, that takes a lot of courage. So mad respect for you because I would not be able to do that on my wedding day. I barely even remember the first couple hours because I was nervous. So mad respect. (laughs) Um, So you grew up in Oregon. What was it like growing up there? So Oregon is, uh, of course, a lot different uh, geography wise. Um, So we go out our front door and have Mount Hood right there. Um, we grew up in the valley and so we had the beautiful, uh, you know, the, the change of all the agriculture that's there. Um, Lamont Valley is really interesting because from field to field you can have different products right next door to each other. So you could have a hazelnut field right next to a pepper field, right next to an onion field, right next wow. to grass seed field, right next to a Christmas tree field. So wow. it, it's really... Uh, a diverse uh, agricultural area um, and then I'll, of course the spread from the the communities of, of the metro of Portland and Salem and Eugene all expanding so rapidly it, into one large <laughs> community basically it mm-hmm. it uh, it's it was a, a f- life is a lot faster there right a lot more demanding um, so that's what I enjoy about the Midwest. Um, people aren't so rushed and so more interested in the talking and listening where everybody's just so busy out there and always in a hurry. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Midwest nice is definitely a thing. And I think it is because we kind of have a slower pace. We can stop and talk and get to know each other and smell the roses every once in a while. It's not a high buy. <laughs> that's yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, uh, we grew up in a community where we, uh, all of us farmers, uh, all knew each other, and so it was good. Um, you could see a farmer going by and and know who they were, mm-hmm. and and uh, we'd often would go and help them uh, during harvest uh, on the onion farm. So it was it was a good community that I grew up in, and you knew all the neighbors, and they all helped you, and um, went to a small school and all that fun stuff. So uh, a lot of it's similar to out here, but mm-hmm. just we were just. 10 minutes from a larger city. Um, so wow. that's, that's the difference is that we were just on the edge of a larger city. Interesting. Hmm. Well, um, so you were in Oregon for a majority of your childhood yep. and then you went to college. So where'd you go to college at? So I went to Oregon state in Corvallis. Um, so don't hold it against me, but I'm a beaver. <laughs> okay. uh, and so, uh, went, there um, kind of followed the footsteps of my grandfather and my father. They both went to the same college. Um, it was interesting going into the same uh, 
tree uh, or the greenhouses um, that my grandfather had been in. I mm -hmm. went in and took horticulture classes in wow. the same greenhouses that my grandfather had been there. Um, so it was it was good. Um, yeah, I got an ag degree in business management, and um, the it was it was a good time, a uh, good college at the time. Um, just the hard part was is our family farm had closed down at, when I had re, uh, graduated from high school, so I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with my ag degree. But I, can, I went ahead and got an ag, ag degree, which was of course beneficial for me and right. all, all my other endeavors. Right. So. And you have kind of an interesting career path after college. Mm -hmm. So you worked at a Bible camp yes. for a while, right? Yes. So um, strange things, how God uh, led different ways mm -hmm. for me to get up uh, to central Washington. Um, and uh, yeah, I spent four years up there as their program director slash director. Um, I took care of everything from um, you know, booking all the rentals to running our own camps to being the janitor to being the log split, splitter. Um, had a uh, forest fire my first year as camp director come oh. within a lot very far, so we had to evacuate. Uh, yeah, a lot of experiences, um, <laughs> but it was great. Uh, we were four miles from the closest uh, telephone pole and five miles from the closest asphalt up in the middle of the mountains uh, in the eastern slope of the Cascades. Uh, so I was what you call a mountain man. Wow. Uh, up there, um, living off of, um, you know, generators and and wood stoves, and that's all we had, So and solar power. So it was interesting. Yeah, that's neat. That's unique, too. Not a lot of people have had that experience. Yeah. Up there... With the mountain lion and the bears, um, bobcats, uh, of course the elk were right out in the meadow. Um, but I really enjoyed those years. Uh, that was a great uh, um, having kids come and learn about Christ and, and being able to be in that environment was was awesome years. Um, so, Yeah, absolutely. So you were at this job for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And then what did your career path look like after that? Well, then uh, I met my, uh, through a strange way, through, I met my wife, uh, and so we got married, and then we spent another year out in Washington, and I worked at a uh, little place that sold tapes and CDs and videos to missionaries worldwide, <laughs> and I worked there for a year, uh, and that was very interesting listening to missionaries across the entire globe. Wow. Um, and uh, hearing their stories and, you know, they would come to us because they could get those resources that they needed for their places at a reduced cost. Uh, so I basically was a, you know, customer service rep, a phone mm -hmm. answer, taking orders of, over phone. Um, that's when I learned interesting things, uh, like when you read off a credit card number to somebody, make sure you're pronouncing every syllable and so that they can understand you, you know, instead of just ripping it off, I learned that, oh, okay, that person cannot put, do 16 digits in less than a second. So, <laughs> right. um, you know, it was interesting. Um, and so that was, uh, that was the first year after marriage. And then we chose to come out to here, uh, to York after that, or to Stromsburg after that. Okay. So, is your wife from Stromsburg, yes. this area then? Yes, she is uh, from a family that's been in Stromsburg since almost the beginning of Stromsburg. So wow. uh, I think my kids are like the seventh or eighth or ninth generation or whatever in that town. So uh, yes, I I married into a longstanding family in Stromsburg. Great. I mean, we're happy that that happened. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great choice. Okay. Um, so... I'm assuming your wife kind of brought you to the area. You yes. kind of came back with her. Yep. If you don't mind me asking, how did you guys meet? You kind of said it was an interesting story. So at the camp, um, so going to my in-laws, my mother-in-law's brother and his wife went out to Washington State back in the early 70s. And they also went out to work at a different camp back in the early 70s. And they were from out here. Um, and so when I was at the camp, um, I was needing uh, some cooks for our camp, and I knew this couple uh, from the church that I was attending, 
and they had been camp cooks. So I brought them out of retirement and helped uh, have them help at my camp for a while. And during those times, um, I was, uh, of course, young and looking for a, a, a love of my life. And so my mother-in-law's brother's wife, if you can follow <laughs> okay. that, uh, suggested their niece that was out here in Nebraska. And so I was like, well, Nebraska, well, that's safe enough. And so um, that aunt and uncle um, to my wife called them or called my, my wife and said, would you mind getting, you know, having a pen pal from Washington state? Huh. And so um, the, uh, she thought about it and thought, well, no guy's going to write back. And so she almost said no, but then she said, I'll give it a try. And so I wrote to her uh, a first letter and that turned into several letters that then turned into cassette tapes. Oh, because I was getting tired of writing, <laughs> but yet after the, all that, so then we went back and forth with cassette tapes, and then we went to phone calls. And remember, this was back in the day when long distance was expensive. Mm -hmm. So we had to find a plan that then come back to ten cents a minute instead of twenty five cents a minute long distance. And then from there uh, turned into a flight for me to go meet her, mm -hmm. and then we were married that fall. So we were married one day and one. One year and one day after she got my first letter. Wow. And most all of that was remote. So wow. she came out that summer the before we were married um, when I was still at the camp. And that that all was transpired basically remote. So it's kind of a long distance, um, long distance love story. Um, and what's kind of cute is my daughter actually made a video of this that is on, uh, she used a, uh, did a video uh, class in college and she actually did the love story from the beginning to when we met at the airport. And so if you ever can look up uh, um, that love story, it's kind of cute. Um, yeah. And how it worked all together. Wow, I, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I almost feel like that belongs in a book or, <laughs> or a we, movie or we've something. We've always wondered about, you know, if we could write it out or if we could expand on what my daughter did um, and, and turn it into because it's it's literally one of what you call a Hallmark movie. You know? Yeah, <laughs> so. that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is the kind of book that I would read. What is going on? Yeah. So, oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And the rest is history. 25 years plus, yeah. Yeah, and kids and the Two whole shebang. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yes. That's so, cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so going on with family, I mean, family takes priority in your life. You've made it very apparent that they come first, which I agree that's how it should be. Yep. Um, what do you enjoy doing with them in your free time? Well, my idea is um, to do what interests the kids. Um, so... There's a, a concept that I try to do with my kids of uh, as they were growing up is to in, introduce them to things and see what interests them. Um, so take, for instance, my son, um, when he was 11, 12, somewhere in there, we got him a little under $200 telescope. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd go out in our big backyard and we were looking up at the stars and the planets and it took us like a month and a half to just find the rings yeah. on uh, on Jupiter um, or Saturn, Saturn's rings. And um, when he first saw those rings through his telescope, he was hooked. And so mm -hmm. that has become a lifelong uh, uh, project for him. Is And we spent a lot of time uh, out at night uh, looking at the stars. Um, the Polk County Sheriff's knew that our car was up in the back corner of the part of, of Stromsburg where we were always setting up at night. And so they knew that that was just those Kurt guys up there looking at the stars. Um, and so, yeah, it was a good time spending it with, with the sun and, and having times to talk, and but yet also helping them find different constellations. And and if something was going on, he'd always try to look at it. And, you know, so it turned into a, a lot of fun. Um, and then we got him a microscope. Um, 
just because I didn't know what else to get him when he yeah. turned a little older. Right. And that has launched him into uh, all things small. And so he's now into biology in college um, and studying what's called exoplanetology. Wow. <laughs> which is the study of the other planets around other stars and then doing the uh, by the what the biology of that or what the atmosphere and what the <laughs> possible um, uh, atmosphere would be like and the soils and all like that so he's doing awesome um, in his wow. college world so uh, it's parenting is uh, an opportunity to stroke whatever um, the kids take interest in and then to uh, give them the tools and the opportunities and the networking um, so that they can succeed um, and that's what I've tried to do with them and um, so yeah the daughter uh, she's was of course everything young lady you know she <laughs> wants she wants all the um, you know the drawings and the, the, the everything like that so she's I'm of course into the, the art world um, and so you know whatever we could do to give her the the tools that she could do for that which is now turned into her full-time job here in York that's that's amazing yeah. I think you said something that's really valid meeting your kids where they're at mm -hmm. I mean don't expect anything of of them but find what they're interested in and push that along I mean help yeah. that grow yes that's and that's amazing. that's important for every kid to to do what interests them absolutely that's amazing yeah um so what was it like raising I mean kids in your county I mean was it different or what what did you think were some of the strengths of raising kids in this area well of course for us uh we're a little different family because we actually homeschooled okay and so um but the the support um for that was actually a lot better than i thought um you know because of the midwest and the values of family and everything like that um so yeah we it was a great place to raise kids um and, and to give them the opportunities that, that we could do and to spend time with them that, like we did with my wife being able to teach them from home. Um, and, and, and that was actually awesome because we could cater, uh, in our opinion, uh, you know, directly towards what they were interested in through the schooling, you know, mm. and the electives and, and stuff like that. So um, it, it really was a, a good opportunity for them. Uh, along with all the other social things that they were doing and, and helping with at church and all the other activities. So, um, yeah, it was, it was very beneficial to be in a small town. Yeah, absolutely. So homeschooling, was there some sort of network that you worked with, or was that pretty independent? There there was networks that we were involved with um, and uh, was able to do things with, um, but a lot of it was ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, um the concept out there where you have to have kids of other kids their own age group um i, I like to twist that of of exposing them to every age group and get them used to talking to adults and talking to to the elderly and talking to kids their own age and um i we were always able to have them interact on every level um mm -hmm. and so that's uh you know, they've turned out to be both awesome young young people, and and uh, it, it has worked well for us. Absolutely, absolutely. I I have kids of my own, and I'm like, if I don't do anything else right, but I raise good kids, then I did something right. You yes. know, I I lived a good life. Yep. Um, so going back a little bit to your current job at McLean, yes. uh, what do you do? I mean, what what is your job? I know that's a loaded question because you do a lot, but. Well, um, the owners were actually talking to me the other day that we should get, actually get a job description. I'm like, I have no idea. It would take <laughs> a lot. How would I do that? <laughs> so what do I do here? So they call me general manager. Um, so I'm responsible for all uh, personnel. I'm responsible for the, um, the USDA, uh, all, all things USDA. So we have what's called a HACCP program. So I'm responsible to make sure that we are operating within the uh, confines of our uh, documents and our procedures and all the stuff that we say we're going to do to make sure our food is safe. Um, 
and then I'm responsible for all the finances, making sure that we're operating correctly and making business decisions there therein. Um, so it's an interesting position, um, you know, because I actually have the owner's daughter as one of my employees and also the owner as an employee. So sometimes we have to, you know, tell each other which hat we're listening, you know, that we're bringing <laughs> into the room. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it, it, it started basically from a concept that Jeanette and Max had, and uh, I've been a part of it since then to, to now that we're uh, been open a year and a half and we're, mm -hmm. we're uh, expanding and, and fully staffed and trying to now um, you know, continue to improve on where we're at and, and uh, continue to bring this place up to full capacity. So I'm part of all, the, all facets, I guess, all the, from maintenance to personnel to uh, I changed the, the, the mice traps to <laughs> everything. So uh, you might see me on the cashier, you might see me out uh, in the kitchen, you might see me loading out. I do anything and everything, um, plus the long-term planning to get us where we think we could be in five years. So I've got very uh, focused on where we could go and trying to get us there and figuring out how what it would take to get there. So I'm trying to be... Uh, all over, all over eyes to the whole process for Absolutely. the, the McLeans. Absolutely. And I mean, I think it goes to show that you're obviously doing something right because you're fully staffed. We're you're fully staffed, yes. expanding. Yes. I mean, what more can I, there, there's a lot of things that are really well, going well. To take a business from a basically a concept to, to full operation, it takes a lot of mm. time, a lot of uh, planning, a lot of um, mistakes that you have to correct, because uh, I am not perfect. <laughs> I do not know everything. Um, I rely a lot on, on Max and Jeanette and Charmé on their, their knowledge of the cattle business, because I don't have that background. Uh, but, um, you know, as I take care of the safety and the government's USDA and all that, that um, that's what I bring to the table is all that type of leadership and management. Absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not familiar with this background at all either. Um, so USDA, it's kind of uncommon for a shop to have that accreditation, yeah. right? Most shops our size would be uh, what they call custom exempt. So they do not have a full-time inspector on site. Um, so when the McLeans were dreaming of this and, and coming with the concept, they wanted to be able to continue selling to the public and then selling um, to the 48 states. And so to do that, we had to become USDA inspected. Um, so we, uh, at the same time of trying to start this place up, we were also trying to get ourselves online with the USDA. Um, and so that was uh, busy times trying to get all of that in place. Uh, USDA has been, um, you know, really we're on the same team. We both mm -hmm. want safe product to the consumer, and I'm all for that. Um, so I'm, you know, it's it's not like it's a um, difficult or problematic. It's just uh, conforming to their standards and and doing it the way they they want it to be done, which is the same as what I want. I, I don't want anybody mm -hmm. hurt. Or, or bothered or sick or, or worse from right. the products that go through here. So, um, you know, cleanliness and following the procedures and, and uh, making sure that the ingredients are right on the, on the products with ingredients, all those things I'm very adamant about and want to provide the best product for the public. Yeah, and McLean's even takes it a step further in my opinion because not only do you see the um, livestock from birth to slaughter, but you also have a storefront. Yes. I mean, you you literally raise them from birth mm -hmm. to feeding, like feeding people yes. the product. Yeah, so that concept is the, you know, the, the maximize the most value of every pound of beef that we can through this, this you know, it's, it's been my uh, help to push for them, for the McLean's. So, you know, they go through, they have a cow calf, they, they have the whole feed yard, they bring it here, we hang it uh, and process it here. And then if we can get that to the consumer in a, in a form that they're ready 
and 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 want to use and, and gain you know and capture that entire value is is what I'm trying to do so uh, hopefully in the future you will see a lot more what I call value-added products uh, more things um, that uh, we can do with that meat that the consumer wants and is willing mm -hmm. to pay for um, and when they don't have the time to do it that's that's the concept that we're trying to do is provide all those things so you'll, you'll continue to see new products and, and new options as we have the capacity and have the budget to do that's exciting i'm excited because i have never been disappointed with any product that's <laughs> come out of here much to my husband loves it too because he's like "Ooh, what are we grilling tonight you know very yeah. exciting and then i have to bring it up it's kind of a hot spot okay your uh vending machine yes for the meats yes is interesting how did you guys come up with that des design idea well that was a covid thing so um during covid you know if you remember everything was locked down and that's exactly when we were trying to put this place together we were trying to finish the drawings and what the floor plan would look like um, and so we were really scratching our heads of how are we going to sell to the public during this pandemic? And we didn't know how long it was going to be like that. So um, actually, I'm going to give my wife credit again because she, uh, bless her heart, did some research and found a organization that had a uh, vending machine out in there. Their, and she showed that to me and I'm like, that could work. And so I brought that to the table and I showed it to actually at this table that we're at. Um, showed them the idea and so we built that um, front vestibule to be able to be unlocked 24-7 where people can come in and get uh, get the meat ready to go um, and it's refrigerated there so it's not frozen so you don't have to wait for it to thaw. Um, little known fact that actually hamburger goes out of that machine pretty fast because uh, people want thawed hamburger that they don't have to wait for to to, to cook at home to make mm -hmm. better hamburger helper and of course I always say that this meat uh, or this hamburger makes hamburger helper taste good so uh, <laughs> it's got a different uh, ro more robust taste and flavor so it actually helps hamburger helper <laughs> I mean I can't disagree because once again any product that I've gotten here has been top-notch very yeah. very good and as a mom of young children, having it already thawed is huge. Yes. It's something that you wouldn't really think about until you have it. And you're like, oh my goodness, this is so nice. I love yes. this. Um, so great idea. Kudos to your wife. She's yes. a very smart woman <laughs> because I would never have thought of that okay. ever. Yes. Um, so we're going to kind of move on to our next segment. And this is a time just to kind of brag about yourself what's going on um work related not work related doesn't matter is there anything that you're just really excited about really proud of wow uh that's always a hard one on me because i never know which way to go <laughs> i know i know it's hard uh, and more than one answer is correct acceptable okay um well uh we'll just first start with uh you know the the long term here of course is um I've been on record that I'd like to see us in five to seven years being a uh, competitor to Omaha Steaks. So long term, I'd like to continue to bring products and services uh, and to get us uh, well known is, of course, like any small business, I hope they have goals and that that's the target so that we can continue to ship out good products. Um, beyond that, wow, um, I, of course, uh, Probably a lot of people that might listen to this know some of the, the dreams and schemes that Brian comes up with. Um, the, the hard part about being a dreamer and a schemer is they don't always work. And Absolutely. so um, the if people would do research on me someday, uh, they'll find me being involved with biochar, which I'd still like to be going on. Um, it's a great product. Um, and... Uh, really wanting to help the farmers uh, to save those uh, nutrients that are out on their field so they don't leach out uh, by placing uh, biochar out onto the um, out onto the soil. Uh, so someday I'd like to still get involved with that uh, a little more than what I, I, I did that a little after uh, mycogen seeds and, and before I was joined here. Uh, but pandemic and everything like that just wasn't the right timing. But uh, there's still a, a 
um, you know, a product that I want to bring to the table. Um, and I still think I could do that on the side. Um, okay. There's other dreams and schemes that I've been involved with. Uh, it's a, amazing what you can do with who you know. And oh, the, absolutely. The, the network is so important and building those networks. And, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when one of these dreams work. Um, and, um, but yet I'm committed to staying here and helping, helping the McLeans, um, you know, get the most out of this uh, project as, and to help the local processors. That's really, um, not only do we do independent processors, we also do independent brands, uh, small mm -hmm. brands here uh, because of the USDA bug that we have. Um, so the bug is that little round symbol that goes mm -hmm. on the package. Right. right. Some people go, what do you mean by putting a bug on a package? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the little round symbol that has our establishment number. Uh, and anybody that's trying to sell to the general public has to have that on. And that's what the USDA here brings us. So, um, so yeah, the my dreams and schemes are, are to continue to expand, um, basically, you know, use my entrepreneurial skills and business growth um, to continue to help um, some other project. And I never know what that project is going to be, but I, I um, just one showed up earlier this week that uh, sparked my interest. And, Interesting. Um, that, again, it's, you know, opportunities and, and helping somebody else that has a product but they they're not thinking how to actually make it work out in in the real world, and so uh, I've got another opportunity that I'm looking at that I can't really say a lot about. But yep. um, it is a um, you know you look at a need mm -hmm. and you find somebody with a solution and you try to put all that together. And yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so entrepreneurship is kind of in my DNA. Absolutely. And it sounds like we just need to watch you for a little bit and <laughs> see what comes. Well, um, it, like I said, it, it, you can't do it by yourself. Absolutely. It, it, you always have to have the right partner mm. and the right in, investor that believes in what you're doing and um, um, getting more practice at that. So we'll see, see what comes in the next few years. Absolutely. So going back to biochar a little bit, yes. I kind of know what it is, but do you want to explain for our listeners what biochar is made of and okay. what the purpose of it is? Okay. So biochar is a uh, product from basically any biomass. Um, in our position, we were taking wood and um, taking uh, going through a um, pyrolysis is what it's called. It's a high temperature furnace at low oxygen for the correct amount of time, which takes that wood and uh, brings it down into a from a, a good percentage of carbon. So it gets to be 70 to 80 percent carbon that's left after that furnace. And then you uh, use that to put onto everything from your lawn to, um, you know, you can put it on basically any type of crop. You know, orchards love it, vineyards love it, open farmland. And so there's this big problem going on in, in, the, in the farmland is in the last 70 years when they've used all this synthetic fertilizer and, and what I would call harsh farming practices that their soil is changing from 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so um, my vision is uh, to be able to take uh, that biochar and, and to get it onto the farmland. Um, so I've got some dreams about that, um, and hopefully someday maybe that can come about. But that biochar is a carbon. It's basically a, when you look at it underneath a microscope, it has little teeny tubes, and that's where the biological life can live inside of that biochar. And so when you talk to your agronomist and you ask them, what's my carbon level out in my field? They're most likely going to look at you like, what are you talking about? But it's, it's, the, there needs to be the right level of carbon in the soil to support the biological life. And then you need to figure out how to support that biological life to unlock the nutrients for the plant. So current farming practices are putting on synthetic, which harms that biological life. And so when you go out there, do you find healthy organic soil, you know, in your organic levels 
way up and they're all struggling in low two and three organic levels and why aren't they up at the seven eight nine organic level percent it's because their carbon level is so far below so anyhow that's what i was trying to to do with the biochar um and to uh i had a way to to get the the funding so that the farmers didn't have to pay for it and all that kind of idea so yeah i'm a dreamer and schemer wow um so uh Someday, if that all works, um, that's another dream, is, is to be able to put on biochar mixed with uh, the manure from the feed yards that then has been composted and um, available for the crop. So instead of having to put on synthetics, they can actually take from these feed yards and put that that's uh, more ready for the soil to help that crop this next year so they can put on less input. So it's not a hard and fast stop all the synthetics. It's, it's a transition as you, as you help your soil come back to life. Um, but that core is to have that carbon out there. So Interesting. So I thought I knew a little bit about it, but I definitely just learned a lot because I knew very basics, what it was consisted of, and that's about it. So... Yeah, wow. yeah, I as as you uh, see more and more carbon things coming along, because everybody's thinking, oh, we got to do carbon um, capture or carbon, mm. um, you know, the 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 phrase true carbon sequestration, which is the a trademark for for the company I, I am part owner in, is a way to uh, truly show how people to put actual carbon onto a farmland to actually stay there for a long period of time to help that field regardless of how the tenant of that land is taking care of it and so that's an interesting concept along with helping all the um, you know what do you do with all this wood that you know all the ash trees and all the eastern red cedars and all this product what do you do with it and so yeah I've worked quite a bit with that interesting Yeah, definitely going to be watching you in the next few years. Wow. And now, a word from our sponsor. My name is Don Freeman II. I'm president and CEO of AgriProducts in York, Nebraska. We are a manufacturer of quality equipment, uh, grain handling, food storage, food service. And if you ever want to get a hold of us, You can get on our website or you can contact us at 402-362-5500. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to a a segment we like to call hot potato. So I'm going to give you a question as quick as you can. Throw it back at me and answer. Okay. Um, Some of these are hard questions. So if you need to take time, there is no pressure. Uh, So who would you say is your biggest role model? Um, so a gentleman in my youth, um, uh, his name was John. Um, so I'm a firm believer that, uh, you need more than just, uh, your parents. You also need other people to inspire you. And John was that man for me as I grew up. Um, and so he was a businessman. He was a, uh, you know, gifted in, in, in the church and, in taking care of, uh, the people that were in need in that area. Um, and so, uh, I was always uh, looking up to John and um, just how he lived his life, business-wise, church-wise, and helping those in need. Um, so, yeah, John was my mentor and, and example as yeah. a kid. Sounds like an amazing person. Yes, he is. Um, favorite part of your job? Um, of course, it's the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love working with the public. I love meeting people. I love taking tours. Um you know, I'm here to get to know people, um, and what I always like about it too is um, to encourage people. You know, to give them a, a bright spot in their day, or you know, um, I'm always got my ear open if they're they're hurting or you know they're looking down or whatever, and uh, you know, offering a, a help to them or a prayer to them or something like that is is that's my favorite part. Absolutely, and so. Within my job at the YCDC, we're very Mm growth-based, growth-minded, and I can say I appreciate that about you because not only are you focusing on the growth of your business, 
obviously that's important, but you're looking at the growth of the individuals that work for you too, yes. which is unique in some cases and also just really admirable. So my staff are, um, I don't know how to describe it, but they're very important to me. I am, I bend over backwards to try to help people um, and give them counsel or guidance or whatever. Um, a lot of bosses, and I've had some bad bosses, and I'm, I'm wanting to be a, a leader that uh, uh, cares for them, listens to them, puts them where they uh, want to be or feel like they can succeed, and, and, and you, as a manager, sit up here with a three-dimensional chest trying to figure out how to make this all work. Um, and you know you attempt to, to put people in the spots where they can flourish and, and bloom um, and then also help them through the tough spots. Um, I've had people that don't work for me actually reach back out to me in times of need just because um. they know that Brian cares and um, so that's that's who I am. I just I'm, I'm here as a salt and light um, and that's uh, regardless of what life throws at us that's what I'm here for absolutely well I appreciate that <laughs> so um now on to some lighter subject okay um favorite or card game or board game if you had to choose one oh uh, well obviously board game okay do you have a favorite one? Oh, uh, I know putting you on the spot what was that uh, world conquer one um I mean with with the family, we always did, um, you know, Monopoly, um, no. and then um, Caroms. I have heard of that. that. That's a fun one. Okay, I'll so, have to try it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Caroms is a fun game. Interesting. Okay. Oh well, yeah. I feel like I've heard about it, but I just it's it has those little round rings that you have okay. to ping with your finger to get into. It's kind of like pool, but it's on a board game, and it's 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 a game of skill. It's kind of. Okay. Where I do better. Oh, brushing <laughs> off the shoulders, yeah. Yeah, sk skill instead of knowledge, no. Yeah, right, right. Um, would you say music or theater for a preference? Oh, uh, I'm going to say both because I, um, because of the theater and the music background, uh, I love to see plays, uh, musicals. Um, so yeah, I, I could go to either. I, I love going to the orchestra and I also love going to see a play. So I could do either. I, yeah, fair enough. That's a hard, you, it's hard to choose between the two as well because, oh my gosh, there's so much variation and variety mm -hmm. and yeah. So I've, I don't know how many, three or four times now I've actually seen the, the Phantom of the Opera in oh. person. That one is a good and one. So, you know, because of the music is awesome, but yet also the theater and, and uh, the what always gets me when I see it in person is the um, the stage and the mm -hmm. makeup of how do they do that? How do they have that guy falling? How do they have the boat going through the fog and through the candles? And it's just, when I help build the stage for my high school plays, it's like, how do they do that? You yeah. Know? Um, so that's what's interesting to me with that with that particular play yeah and it's a once again it's a great one it's probably one of my favorites i think that was the first play that i actually saw when i was little which interesting choice for a kid that's, but that's interesting yeah. <laughs> yeah no it's a great one um so to wrap things up let's say you're trying to pitch york county to someone mm. what would you tell them to promote it and to get them to possibly move to the area it's hard to find a community with these types of resources that we have here and the openness that we have, um, the location. You know, uh, it's in the perfect place with the, the major highways coming through here. So you have the traffic, uh, you have the access to employees, um, whether it's in New York County or if you have to draw in from the surrounding areas. Um, and then the support of the community and of the city and of the council and all like that um, for for us has been awesome. So, you know, to bring um, businesses here, uh, there's there's not only the opportunity, there's the the local support um, that you know they they owe, they know that businesses are needed, and um, you know they they do everything they can to help. Um, of course, your office has done awesome. 
uh, to help us. Uh, and uh, and uh, we'll remind everybody that the, we also got a grant through you guys um, and that you guys were able to help us with locally uh, for our expansion. So yeah, it's it, those things help and those things make a difference to businesses that are trying to make it in this area. And not every community that I've been in has that effect, uh, especially from where I'm at in the Northwest, where they are so adamant against so much stuff. Um, it's uh, definitely a, a good place uh, to bring a business into. Absolutely. And I'm glad that we could or we can continue to do our part in that. I mean, we couldn't be here without support from our business community. We are... Um, purely here because we want to see York County grow. Uh, we want to we want to see it flourish because, right. I mean, I grew up in the area. I love York. I'm here for a reason. I chose mm -hmm. to come here. Mm -hmm. um, so to be able to make sure that it's still a great place for my kids and if they choose to raise their family here, my grandkids and so on and so forth is really, really important to me. Yes. So, and and they yeah. have the vision to support that. That's what's important. Absolutely. Is the whole community has that vision that we've got to step up. We've got to figure out how do we continue to support businesses? How do we continue to expand um, and bring more uh, manufacturing and more businesses to this community? Um, so I know there's a lot of talk and a lot of planning around that. And uh, that's, that's what's going to make this a uh, great community and great county. Absolutely. Well... Thank you so much for joining me today, Brian, and we will look forward to what is coming down the pipeline, I guess. All Definitely right. keep eyes on you. Well, see what the Lord do. We would like to once again take the time to thank our members, the people that help us drive change at the YCDC. We would like to thank AgriProducts, Cornerstone Bank, Central Valley Ag, Henderson State Bank, York News Times, Black Hills Energy, Collins Aerospace, Southeast Community College, York Medical Clinic, and thank you, our listeners, for continuing to give us your time and support.